suspensions um, on my Stony Creek 15. It's like every other Stony Creek 15, and um, it's as supplied. Um, look, with the amount of uh, these vans that they're they're selling, um, there doesn't appear to be too many failures. Uh, there's literally thousands of them on the road. Yeah, there's nothing wrong there. They're not leaking. They're not broken. Nothing's loose. To be honest, this suspension um, is quite okay. Uh, no problem. Um, but I'm going to upgrade it anyway. Well, here it is. I'm under the van again. We've been out to Stony Creek. The standard suspension is gone and the levels upgrade is in. Have a look. Okay, here it is, the uh, level suspension. And Sam, the dog, Sam the Huckleberry Hound. Say hello, Sam. Yep, that'll do. Okay, so what I noticed straight away with these is they're a lot firmer. It's not um, quite as bouncy. But having said that, the original um, shocks and springs, they're fine. Um, haven't had a problem with them. In a straight line, uh, I don't think you'll notice too much of a difference between these and, and the um, standard uh, springs and shocks, on a good road that is. But once you uh, get onto the bumps and, uh, and the corners, these things come into their own. A lot of difference. Isn't that right, Sam? Definitely recommend going to uh, to the levels. It's um, it's not a big expense. Um, what eleven, twelve hundred bucks, all done, installed, and uh, peace of mind. Um, yeah, it's good for peace of mind. Cheers. A couple of other little additions. I'm not sure that I'd call them mods that I've done to uh, my van. Uh, today I've just added the um, the mounts for these are treads not max tracks but you know they do the same thing so all I've done is put some mounts there Where are we straight through the top of the toolbox obviously uh, siliconed it up so uh, there's no leaks um, because uh, those things come in handy especially on the beach yeah I got bogged and the tires were down yeah before I hear all those people say let your tires down they were down on about uh, 17 18 psi so and so was the car it was just an unfortunately soft piece of beach. This weekend just gone, um, I was having some trouble with the batteries um, dropping down in voltage rather dramatically. In fact, it got down to 7.6 volts, which means uh, those uh, AGM batteries were cactus. Um, in fact, uh, that same problem has been uh, uh, plaguing uh, my van since April. And I was looking for all manner of uh, of issues how it was causing it. When in fact, it was one um, uh, battery with a a bad cell pulling the others down. And uh, when one pulls the others down, uh, then the others start to go as well. And that's what happened. So anyway, uh, Stony Creek uh, replaced those batteries under warranty for me. Um, all good. So um, I got home, ripped them out sold them <laughs> because they're all brand new batteries and uh, went and did a, um, a lithium upgrade so I'll show you that now so now there's a um, Renergy charger uh, with a um, solar charger with a built-in DC to DC um, which is good and it's got the Victron AC charger now and two 
Renergy lithium batteries. So 200 amp hours and uh, the voltage is floating nicely. When you do the uh, lithium upgrade, um, what they also do is they use the uh, Anderson plug that's on the drawbar um, as your charging point from your car. Now, um, with the Stony Creek, uh, if you've got AGM batteries, typically that just goes straight to the batteries. Um, obviously, some people uh, take it off and put it into a DC charger so you can charge your batteries, but um, yeah, it's it's not uh, set up that way standard. So when you do the lithium upgrade, they give you another little um, Anderson plug at the uh, back right quarter for your so uh, additional solar panels. And I just put that cover on, and then they charge, uh, change the uh, one on the drawbar um, to go through the uh, DC to DC, which is a component of the Renergy uh, solar charger. Happy days. out of the way. Don't want that in the shot. Yeah, g'day. Um, caravan TV antennas. Yeah, they're not much good. You know it. Here's one. A little mushroom job on the top of my Scout, uh, Stony Creek Scout 15. Look, caravan antennas are low gain. They're not, not real flash. Um, and I hear so many people say, I can't get a good TV signal. We're going here, we're going there, and I've got no TV. It's breaking up. Well, of course, because these things, they're, they'll, they'll work in a capital city. They'll work in a large regional centre where the caravan park is, um, you know, right in the centre of town, and, and so are you. Um, but once you go out into um, regional towns and remote towns only half of those towns even have a tv transmitter how do i know well, well i build those tv transmitters my day job is um, as you saw the logo earlier um, that's what i do I build tv transmitter sites and um, some towns have them some towns don't so if you're in a town that doesn't have a tv transmitter there's only one way you're going to get tv and that's with a satellite dish, a kit like this, um, and so you set your satellite dish up, you point it at the Optus uh, C1 uh, D3 satellite, and uh, you can watch your TV services. But all the ads are from Alice Springs, so you know you've got ads for heifers and farming equipment, etc. But it doesn't matter; the programs are all the same. So, look. This one works when we are on the east coast. When we stay in caravan parks on the east coast, it'll work fine because everywhere on the east coast, uh, there's a, a TV transmitter. Anyway, uh, I take a pole and a, uh, a log periodic um, TV antenna. Uh, so if I want terrestrial TV, terrestrial meaning it's being broadcast off the top of a hill, a mountain somewhere, and satellite TV obviously comes from up there. So, um, uh, yeah, don't expect too much from these. Anyway, the other thing is, don't work on ladders with alcohol. I'll just get down. And one more little mod that I've done is a vast satellite decoder mounted on the back of the TV there. So I've got the uh, inputs on the side of the van. So they just run up to the satellite dish. And um, yeah, we've got uh, satellite TV everywhere. And this uh, little $49 fan, just picked it up from Rotec Marine. And it's a lot cheaper than the Sirocco fans and uh, works just as well, $49. So this is the external antenna socket and cover, and it's got two inputs. Um, the left 
I'm using for the terrestrial input so I can put an external TV antenna outside and on the right is the input for the satellite decoder so I just run a RG6 cable inside one to the satellite decoder and one to the antenna socket on the TV then you can have a satellite dish outside or you can have an external TV antenna and let's face it the antennas on the roof of these vans are just pretend they're not very good low gain as I've said before uh, they're not worth a carrot okay this is the lazy way to find your satellite um, this is a fully automatic uh, satellite dish and uh, you can just have a beer um, or do a video or something while uh, it's setting up so show you what's going on here normally um, I sell these to mount on top of um, caravans hard top caravans uh, putting them on a pop top adds a bit of weight makes it a bit harder to, uh, to put the roof up that's what why it's not on my pop top isn't that right yeah yeah and uh, <laughs> yeah, what'd you say it's white time already yeah um yeah so i've got it on the roof of the car where people can see what it does and uh it makes it easy for me too because i can have a beer while it's doing that instead of kicking a tin dish around anyway um so if you're interested in uh, these satellite dishes you know who to call satellite television and radio australia that's me also one half of the wandering huckleberries you know the salute you with your hands over my wine oh there she is <laughs> wandering huckleberry